Hi, Justin Chamnis here, and welcome back to Business, Business Management School. This module is called Wealth Comes From Relationships, and that is absolutely true. And in this module, we're going to dive right into that, and I want to give you a free gift. And this gift, if you put it to use, it will change your life. And I'm not even kidding. It changed my life, and it has changed a lot of other people's lives. This will change your life. So I'm so glad you're here on this module with me. Let's jump right in to building wealth with relationships. All right, building wealth comes from building relationships. That's just a statement of fact. Like I say all the time, Nobody gets rich in this business alone. That's the truth. I say it probably every day. Nobody gets rich in this business alone. Nobody. Nobody. You'll never do and you never have done, you never will do a real estate transaction without having other people involved. You got to have a team involved. You got to have people that know you and people that you know. There at least has to be a buyer and a seller. You're never going to complete a real estate transaction by yourself. So you better learn how to build and develop great relationships with people that lead to your success and wealth. Now, with that being said, I do have a special gift that I want to give you today. But before I do that, I want to share a few real good gold nuggets that you can find in this special gift and uh, the first thing is is that you need to learn how to shift your mindset and build relationships there are two kinds of people out here in the world we've all met them maybe we know them personally maybe you are them but there is a whiff em kind of guy and when I say whiff em I don't know if you've ever heard that before or not but it's an acronym and it's W-I-I-F-M whiff em and it means what's in it for me What's in it for me? Is that your mentality? Or you can flip the coin over and then you'll find a mentality uh, in some folks that is, hey, how can I better help and serve you? What can I do to better help and serve you? And I can tell you that if you're going to be in this business and you're going to have a service of helping sellers in their problems and a service of providing great deals to buyers or tenant buyers, then you're going to have to learn to get away from the whiff em mentality. There is a time and a place for what's in it for you and generally in this universe it is after you have made an offer for a fair exchange. So in other words you have to give something to get something. A lot of times we go around saying hey in our minds you know what's in it for me when we haven't made any investment of service, work, effort, thought, prayer, or money into anything but we're expecting a return it's just absolutely bogus and this universe that you and I live in just simply does not work that way in every case <laughs> there are no free lunches and you might say well I've had a free lunch or two in my day yeah but that chicken had to give its life right yeah, but that, that, that guy that made the bread for the sandwich, he had to go to work that day and give several hours of his day to make the loaf, you know, or the loaves that, you know, provided the bread for that lunch that you had that was free. It was maybe at no cost to you, but it cost someone something somewhere. Okay, it cost someone something somewhere something of value either time, effort, energy, knowledge, expertise, or money, but there are no free lunches in this universe. So you need to get the mentality that you're going to be one of those people who is a giver so that you can then be justified in your expectations to be a receiver, okay? Now, in saying that, there are a few things that you need to do besides learning how to shift your mentality over to a how can I better help and serve mentality and one of those things is is you need to learn to not be the biggest talker in the room okay don't be the biggest big shot in the room 
let the people around you share their stories and their experiences and their wisdom and their knowledge okay let them share and they'll walk away liking you and trusting you because you let them share and open up you let them be the smartest guy in the room and you listened and you learned you you, you learned how to be an active listener and you practice that with them and they can feel that even on a subconscious level so you know you're 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 doing the right things here and and you let them do the talking you're doing the listening you know active listening here not just passive listening you know like while sports center is on and your spouse is talking to you that's passive listening okay i'm talking about active listening eye contact not stalker stare Okay, eye contact. Yes, sure. Uh-huh, that's interesting. Tell me more. See, don't you like that? Everybody likes that. Okay, so don't be the biggest talker in the room. You gotta learn to listen, okay? Don't be an interrupter either, okay? <laughs> Nobody gives a shit about your story enough for you to interrupt their story to share your story. Okay, don't do that. Don't be an interrupter. Practice being a listener, and then when they're done and you've finished listening, then now you can share. You'll be the smartest guy in the room, I promise you, uh, eventually. <laughs> All right. The listener is the one in control. The listener is the one in control of the conversation, so learn to listen. And also, you're going to learn to want to ask a lot of questions. Okay. When, when you're with someone of wealth, when you're with someone of, of higher esteem than you, you need to learn to play a little hush mouth and ask a lot of questions and then listen actively to the answers. Now, you know, you're going to ask a lot of questions. I, I like to think of it like this. When, remember the last time you went to the doctor's office? They checked you in. The nurse took you into the back. She put you on the scale. She measured your height. She did all these preliminary uh, exam type things. And then she took you into a room. She told you the doctor will be here as soon as he wraps up with these other patients. He'll come into your examination room and you can see the doctor then it'll just be a few minutes and then she shuts the door and leaves you in this little white room all by yourself and you're waiting on the doctor and eventually the doctor shows up and the doctor walks in the room and the doctor says hi how are you and you say i'm doing fine he says i'm dr so-and-so and you shake hands and he says now tell me what brings you here to see me today and then uh, you see he's already begun with the questions and now you're going to start answering the questions. Well, I came in because such and such is hurting and blah, blah. And he's going to say, oh, well, how long has that been hurting? And you're going to say, it's been this long. And he's going to say, well, when did it start? And what were you doing when it started? And then you're going to share that. And he's going to say, well, now, has it has it gotten worse or has it gotten better and then you're going to answer that and he's going to say now does it hurt when you do this and you're going to try that and you're going to say well no it doesn't well how about when you do this and then he's going to figure out all these other things about it and then he's going to ask you more questions well have you done anything yourself to try to treat this and you're going to say the answer to that and then he's going to ask you something else and then something else and then something else that's the way it is but he's a professional and he's learned to actively listen to the prospect to actively listen and to ask plenty of questions because in asking the questions he establishes he establishes himself as a professional fact when he asks the questions he is establishing himself as a professional in a non-aggressive way I'm asking you all of the right questions because I'm a professional and I want to understand you and your situation. You see how this is different than the Wiffum guy? No, no, forget that Wiffum guy. You know, you can go see a doctor and let the doctor ask a lot of questions. You can be the doctor. You can be the doctor of real estate. You can be the doctor of real estate wholesaling. And you can go around and you can ask all the sellers all the pertinent questions and you can really understand their situation and you can then offer a solution that they'd be willing to pay for. Absolutely. Same principle applies with your buyers. 
you can be the listener and you can ask plenty of questions about what areas and what style of homes and how much in, in repair and, and how much in ARV and are they cash or are they loan or what type of loan and what kind of earnest money are they working with and, and how long have they been doing this and how many crews do they have and how many kids do you have and you know where does it hurt and how can I better serve you? You offer a solution to people and they take your solution because they like you, they trust you, and they see you as a professional because you're doing these things, okay? Now, this goes along with that. Practice being on time, okay? Practice being on time with your phone calls. When you say you're going to call someone back, call them back at that time or text them back at that time or email them back at that time or if you're going to see them in person, be there on time. In fact, be there a few minutes early if you can. And if you're running late and you're supposed to meet someone, let's say at 2 p.m., for example, and it's now 2 p.m. and you're still five minutes away, do, do them a courtesy and call them and let them know, say, hey, I got hung up, I'm five minutes away, but I am on the way. Okay, it's real simple. Do you know what happens to me sometimes when I have realtors do this to me? They'll set up a, an appointment with me at 1.30 and they'll ask me to be there at 1.30 and I'll be there at 1.30, and guess what? Crickets, no one else is here at 1.30. Guess what, I look at my phone, no one has texted me, no one has emailed me, no one has called me. I don't know what's going on with this realtor, but they're not here at 1.30 like they asked me to be, and so at 1.35, my ass rolls out. Yeah. And then the realtor calls and says, usually, are you there? Where are you there? I'm so sorry. Oh, I got blah, blah, and hung up in the traffic and the dentist and the kid and the dog bit the mailman and oh my God, I'm getting divorced and I got to go to the hospital and I just couldn't make it. Can you come back? Nope. We're off to other houses. We're off to other things. You'll have to reschedule for another time. Please call the office. Because I'm not out here to I'm not out here to waste time, mine or theirs. Okay, and if I'm a professional and they're not, that's not my problem. Right? Now I do drive a hard line right there, but that sometimes I give them ten minutes. Okay. When you're out with somebody that's of higher esteem and knowledge than you, pay pay for the bill, okay? If you take them out to coffee and they're sharing with you their life experiences, pay for the coffee. Don't split the bill with them. It's, it's just absolutely it's insulting. Okay, don't don't insult the, the, the mentor, okay, by asking him to pay for half of your shit. Come on. Think about it. Reverse the roles for one second in your mind and think about how you would want to be treated if you were really the richer, more smarter person. Would you want to be treated like, oh, hear all my stories. I'm a, I'm a goofy fucker that never did anything, but hey, listen to me. I got cool stories. You want to be that guy? No, you don't. You don't. You don't. And here's another thing. Don't respond emotionally to people. Give it 24 hours. Somebody sends you a hot email or a hot text message. Maybe they got a little sassy with something. Hey, let it go. Let it go. Give it 24 hours and then respond professionally without emotion involved. Okay? Don't be sarcastic to people. Sarcasm is, is ugly in business. Okay? Don't do it. Don't do it. Now, the free gift I wanted to give you is a book. It's by a guy named Dale Carnegie. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. It will change your life. I'm going to attach it down below the video. You will probably want to go buy a paperback and, or a hardback. It's real cheap. You can get it anywhere. It's a classic. It has been around for a very, very long time, and it is still true today, just like it was the day it was written. Okay, It will teach you how to stop being a social retard. If you are a social retard, if you do not know how to shut up and listen to people and, and how to write emails to people and how to, if you're offensive or you're just too shy or you're just, you're just some kind of a social fuck up, this book is for you. I'll tell you what, man, I've been a social fuck up and this book changed my life. So I'm giving it to you. I hope you use it because it will add to your financial bottom line. Your success 
level will go up because you know how to win friends and influence people <laughs> because Dale Carnegie showed you and he'll show you exactly how he'll show you exactly how all right we'll see you guys thank you love you hey thanks for watching but don't forget to post introduce yourself tag a friend like us leave a comment subscribe share this video just do something don't just sit there there's all that money out there you got to get going get in motion this is motion real estate baby.